Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton, or as she's known by the people who know her best, Mama C. The show where we uniquely combine the information teens need with the entertainment teens want. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another um, episode of Real Talk for Real Teens. I am your host, Kim Creighton. And tonight, I have, um, there have been a few times, um, but tonight, I again have one of those people who I admire, who, um, this is a person who's in my field, who is um, what some call her a guru of um, positive development. So I'll introduce her in a minute, but our musical guest tonight is B. Dot Croc. And if you guys remember her, she was on the show with um, two other guys, two other people for the Is There a Message in the Music. So we played one of her songs, so tonight we're featuring her with four songs. So let me introduce my guest tonight. Um, her name is Karen Pittman. And Karen, tell my audience about yourself. Well, I run an organization called the Forum for Youth Investment. Uh, it's about uh, 15 years old. Uh, and I've basically spent my whole life in one way or another youth work, starting working directly with young people, uh, moving on to do research uh, and uh, policy about young people. Uh, So over the past 40 years, I have uh, probably started four organizations, uh, worked for a couple of others, um, but the work has continued to be the same, and it really focuses on um, the question of of what it takes for young people really to be ready for college work and life, uh, and why our communities are doing more to support them. And that gets to our, the topic of our show. The title of this episode is Are You Ready? And you guys know, you know, you know, you know. That's all I talk about. I so talk about getting you prepared, um, getting you to for that successful transition from adolescence to adulthood. And so before, to set this conversation off, I'm going to read to you an email that I received from a young lady who had interviewed with me to be an intern um, in my organization. And basically, she, she, we had a great interview, um, and I gave her one assignment. I said, go home and think about a unique way you could um, add value to my organization. Because I think that's very important. I think um, unless you know you can add value to someone's, to someone's life or what they're doing or whatever, what is the real point of you being there? Um, it's not all about you. It's about that collaborative, that win-win. And so I was expecting this. We had a great conversation. So I was expecting a great email, and um, this is what her response was. Dear Ms. Creighton, this is, her name is removed, one of the students that you interviewed yesterday. After thinking about the questions you asked me and what you told me about your company, I have come to the decision that it is not something I can do. When I told you I was interested in the opportunity, it was true. I am. But once I thought about it, I realized there is nothing that I could bring to your company. Thank you for the opportunity, and I apologize for the inconvenience. I forwarded that email over to Karen because it, it kind of hurt me. And not kind of. It, it was just startling that a young person felt that they have absolutely nothing of value to, to offer anybody, or my organization or any other. And um, Karen and I, um, like I said, I forwarded to Karen, and we just decided that we're going to start the conversation there. So let's start it, Karen. Yeah, I, I had the same reaction uh, to that email as you did, which is why I thought it was so important that we just start this conversation about are you ready off um, with your reading that. And, and thanks for sharing it with me, and thanks for doing that. Uh, clearly, as, as you read the response, this, you know, is an articulate a bright young woman who clearly interviewed well. I think you told me in confidence you were ready to offer her the job. She was the best of the the interviewees. Um, Yes, yes. She came 30 minutes early. (laughs) Yes. All all of the skills that you would want showed up early, presented well, communicated well. Um, You know, what's painful is that, that when you ask that question, what do you think you could contribute that actually 
enlightened her. We're, we both know she had things to contribute. The thing that is so sad is that that question is so rarely asked. That really may have been for her the first time exactly. anyone actually asked her, what can you contribute of value? Not, uh -huh. this is what I want you to do, but uh -huh. step back, assess the situation, and tell us how you think you could be helpful. I remember a couple of years ago, um, I was uh, speaking at a dropout prevention summit, not my favorite name for a gathering. Exactly, um, exactly. I'd rather have us <laughs> talk about how we're helping young people be ready, not how we're helping them prevent dropping out, because often when they drop out, they have very good reasons for doing so. But Exactly. Um, <laughs> I, 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 when I do these, I, I really do ask for there to be a panel of young people that I can interview and, and talk, talk with, in addition to doing you know, the keynote and the PowerPoint and those things. And so I had uh, four or five young people uh, from this community uh, with me, all of whom were juniors or seniors or young people who had dropped out and, and were back getting their GED, but all of them were basically ready and poised to, supposedly ready and poised to do the next thing. And so I asked them to describe themselves and what they were doing, and they did, and some, were already, some had already been accepted to college, et cetera. Then when I asked the question, so as you think about what you're about to do next, because each of you is telling me you're about to start a job or you're about to go to college, um, what, are, what are you worried about that you aren't quite ready about? What skills do you think you'd like to have mastered a little bit more? Uh, what experiences would you like to have had under your belt? Is there something that you could be doing in this next six months that would get you more prepared for where you're going next? And it was one of the longest silences I had had. Um, on the, it's nobody answered the question. And finally, one young person answered and said, well, you know, I, I, guess, I guess I could, you know, I, I could improve my uh, communication skills. And then another young person answered, but they were very slow to answer. And so after most of them had answered, I said, that seemed like a really hard question. Tell me why that was a hard question. And every one of them said, nobody's ever asked me that question before. Exactly, exactly. Nobody's ever just stopped to ask, assess what you're about to do, think about what skills you're going to need to have, what experiences you want to bring into that situation, and how can we help you use your next three months, six months, two years to really be prepared for the thing you want to do next. No one had ever asked that question. We'll, and then we'll, we talk the about that. The question we ask is, what do you want to do? And then we leave it at that. Because if you say you want to be an accountant, then we throw you in you know, accounting classes or, or whatever. But we don't ask you why. We don't ask you how would it bring value to your life. What, 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 you know, the thought process behind that. Yeah, and we don't, we don't back up from the content matter exactly. to, to help exactly. young people understand what skills or competencies or how it might fit with their interests, how it might fit with their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, this goes way, way back. But when I was in graduate school doing research for my dissertation, again, same thing I've been doing all my life, I interviewed, I was in Chicago, I interviewed young people who, again, were juniors and seniors in high school. And um, I interviewed young people in private schools, in public schools, you know, in a range of neighborhoods and classes, and, and asked them this question of what do, you want to, what do you want to do and tell me why? Why do you want to do that? And what I found was that when I, when I asked young people who were, um, you know, sort of in the honors classes, um, where the assumption was that they were going on to college, their parents had gone to college, et cetera, when I asked them what they wanted to do, more often than not, they would say, I'm not sure. I might be this, I might be that, but I know that I'm interested in these things. When I would ask young people who were in some of the inner city schools, which were not as well to what they wanted to do, they would be quick to say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an accountant. I'm going to be a lawyer. And I'd say, why? Tell me, tell me why. And, you know, the answers were, again, well, they make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, they drive good cars. Um, 
And one young man who was determined to be a doctor, I said, well, tell me what you think you have to do to be a doctor. Well, I know I've got to go to college. And then we just got down to the basic fact that he fainted when he saw blood. And I said, well, how are you going to be a doctor? (laughs) How are you going to be a doctor if you don't like the sight of blood? Again, that just not a very hard question, but nobody had had enough of a conversation with him about what it would take to be a doctor, just those kinds of conversations we just don't have often enough. We're, 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 used, to, we're used to, and they're used to it, us giving them the, um, the, the, you know, the tip of the iceberg statement. And so when people like us, like you and I and my mom who does this work, when we start asking questions, they're just like, what, huh? And then parents and teachers and people around us are so amazed by the answers and responses we get. And it's like, it's not amazing. I just asked the question. I went below right. the surface. I didn't, like, I didn't let that surface answer, that, that benign yes or no, that means absolutely nothing to me unless I'm asking you a direct question um, that requires a yes or no answer. Um, I'm going to dig a little deeper. I want to know why. I want to know what are you thinking, what, what's the payoff, all of those things. Because I know I had, I mean, I, I, I live here too, and those things have to they apply to me, so they have to apply to you. Yeah. No, it's true. And you know, the, the other thing that is, is so important, you know, when young people are in school, we talk so much about the content, about their math skills and their reading skills and are they – passing the entrance, the exit exams, and things like that. We focus so much on Mm -hmm. that academic performance that, again, back to the young woman who decided she had nothing to offer, we don't help young people name the other skills and competencies that they have or that are extremely important when you go to get a job or when you go to college. So that we know we talk a lot about, you know, preventing – kids from dropping out and making sure young people are graduating from high school, what we don't tell young people is that four out of ten young people who graduate from high school, when they show up to apply for an entry-level job, they're turned down because the employers don't think they have the skills for that job. Now, it's not so much the math skills and the reading skills that they're looking for. They're looking for communication skills, that certainly yes. can include reading, Those but it also skills. just means talking, listening, listening, mm-hmm. interacting, the teamwork skills, mm-hmm. the work ethic, Those that young women who Those showed up on that time. Can't be, there's those things can't, that can't easily be measured or cannot be measured with a standardized test. They can't be measured with a standardized test. What we know is that they can, once we name them and we describe them, mm-hmm. We actually can measure them in the same way that we measure many other things. So there's a set of schools um, around the country that are called New Tech High Schools, and they were set up. Okay, stop right there. Stop. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back to New New Tech High Schools. New Tech High Schools. We'll talk about it when we come back. Yeah, that's what we'll talk about. All right, guys, we have our first song by B. Croc, Pressure. Yeah. It's like she back. I said I think we back. What's up? What's up? Tyson 
sight, biting ears, taking off, knock him out the park like Manny, track beat like Manny, and no pressure like Tiger before his wife, club the caddy, I'm like Kobe in the fourth with the pressure on, your love short like a leprechaun, so let bygones be bygones, or we can start a ride like two chains, I'm riding on tracks like two trains, homie, I'm here. I'm like Jeremy Lin with Coach that go in, smash veterans but no rookies. I poly D these cookies, I'm on the edge, so don't push me. My time in like Kanye at a war show, I feel might like, feel tight with the trick, but it's real life when I sit. Said I'm under pressure like this. At a dog fight with two pits, got it on lock like convict, didn't know this like late rent, take a place in. When you base out the basement, you can scribble like cavemen, so the wall cave in you face it in the sky. Like what's the limit? Feeling like Mike, wanna glide, move up to the finish line. In due time, I feel like Mr. Carter, you'll be watching the throne. A televised revolution, you watching from home. Get on a beat and I go like the same last year. My whole team bounty hunting, that's clear. What they fear is my true effort, cause I got better under pressure. I got better under pressure, I got better, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but you should be the one under the pressure. Welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton. To talk live on the air, call 347-539-5226. All right, welcome back, guys. I have Karen Pittman on the line, and again, our musical guest this week is B. Doc Croc. So uh, we, were, we left on commercial, we are talking about new tech high schools. So tell us about what, so tell us what those are. Yeah, these were schools that were started probably 15, 20 years ago um, to, to test out the, the importance of bringing technology in uh, to support project-based learning, and people working in teams, um, really tackling real challenges and then learning through those challenges. Um, the technology turned out to be important, uh, of course, but technology is now much more integrated into schools than it was 20 years ago. But one of the things that these schools did was to sit with all of the teachers, the administrators, um, and talk about the total package of skills that they wanted their young people um, to, to develop, not just the academic skill. Uh, and what this led to was that when teachers developed their work plans, they developed them on two dimensions. Uh, they, so let's say it was an American Studies course, they had to make sure that they were covering the content that was required um, by that state. They also then made sure that they were varying the different things that young people were doing 
whether they were doing team projects, they were doing presentations in class, they were going out into the community to learn things and bring them back in. They had to have a very set of learning strategies in addition to reading and sitting in your chair in the class um, that allowed young people to not only learn the content but actually develop different skills and competencies that were named. And these were skills like teamwork, work ethic, communication skills, problem solving skills, those kind of things that were, were named. Now, not only did they name those skills, and the teacher gave out a plan for the class, it was clear which kinds of assignments were supposed to be connected to which kind of skills. And mm -hmm. each assignment was associated with both the content that was being learned and the skills. Mm -hmm. And then young people were graded on both. And if it was a team, the team helped to grade. So that what that meant was that at the end of the course, when you got your grade, two young people could get a C, one young person got a C, they nailed the content, but they didn't like working in a team, they didn't have communication skills, they didn't have a good work ethic. The other young person might have struggled with the content, but they excelled in those other areas. When that report card came to that young person, when that young person took it home, there was much more information there for them to understand where they needed to work and where they actually had strength. Had that young woman who interviewed with you been in a school like that, where they were naming and affirming the different kinds of skills that you can have, as well as getting to practice them, she wouldn't have gone home and found it so hard to be able to talk about and come back to you with what she thought she could offer um, your organization. So, uh, And the young people who go to these schools, um, even though they're often young people who have dropped out or they're coming out of alternative schools, they got a 90, 95 percent of those young people not only graduate but go on into college or successfully transition um, into a career. And that's uh, now you're getting into that piece, that youth development piece, that positive development piece that we know so well when we're talking about. Now we're talking about those development assets. We're talking about it's not just the the content, the math, science, social studies, and language arts, but it's 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 mirror and marrying those um, um, those um, assets of self worth. Um, accountability, autonomy, all those things that make a whole effective um, human being than just the skills. Can they do math? If Can they do math, but if they're, if they're um, recognized that some young person in the classroom is struggling, do they have some empathy or sympathy and then reach out to that young person, or whatever those things are? It's not in a vacuum where the schools seem to have. It's, it's like to them everything is black and white. And so often I, I, when I'm talking to young people, like right now I'm having these conversations about, so um, are you graduating? Graduation is two weeks away, and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm graduating. Then I'll say, so what's your report card? Oh, I'm, I have two Fs. So how are you graduating? How do you even um, mix that together? You're not graduating until you are passing these classes. Then I say, so what are you doing after? I'm going to college. So what college are you going to? Oh, I'm going to whatever. So did you get an um, acceptance letter? No, but I'm going. Well, how, how are you going? You didn't get an acceptance letter. Not only did you, did you not get an acceptance letter, but your application is not complete. And it's like there's a total disconnect in what they say they want and the actions or the things that they're doing and we're supporting them to do to get to that space. Yeah, well, absolutely and, and understandably, you know, it's, it's it's one thing to put uh, you know the end goal out there, graduate from high school, go to college, get a good job, buy a house, whatever. We can put those out there. And so when you ask people about their aspirations, there's not a huge difference. Everybody wants to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, but whether you honestly really expect to do that, and whether you actually know what the steps are to get exactly. there, exactly, exactly, different things not going to know the steps, again, if either if you're either not growing up with people that you've seen go through those steps, or the people who are working with you, the teachers, the youth workers, uh, folks in the faith community, your neighbors, your relatives are actually having those conversations with you and breaking it down. Um, you know, in the same way that you could aspire to play basketball, but you're not going to play basketball <laughs> if someone doesn't teach you the game and break it down, and then you do a lot of practicing. Yeah, I have, um, I have, it happens with the show because, you know, I feature the musical artists and everybody's a musician until I say, well, 
you need to have this music release sign form form signed, and you need to send me four songs. And everybody's like, oh, I'm thinking, well, dude, you cannot give me music that you've sampled Jay-Z. You do not have the copyright for that. And those um, YouTube things you're doing, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, they don't understand the process of the business behind music. They have the passion. It's just about realizing that there's a whole set of skills and attributes and things that go with that. And I, that brings me to your – as I read that email from the young lady, what stood out for me is your quote that I, that I always use is, problem-free does not mean fully prepared. Mm-hmm. So much of what I do, so much of what I do is um, – I've worked with the, the uh, what you know people call delinquents, bad kids. I've worked with the runaways. I've worked with – um, them and yes, I am good at it. I am so I am very good at it. But they have resources, and then the people, the gifted kids, have resources. There's tons of resources. It's the the quote unquote average kid, the one in the middle that get lost because they're not making any noise. They're not bothering anybody. And this is exactly who this young lady is. She's a young lady who's gonna you know she's gonna do enough to get you know get by in class. She's not gonna keep up a fuss. And thankfully, when I told the person who uh, recommended her to come to the interview, when he went back to the school and told her teachers, two of her teachers had a conversation with her, and she's thus cha- since changed her mind. So thankfully, she okay. does that. Yeah, thankfully. And, uh, and and once we finish, I will read the, the email that she sent me. This is how she puts together an email. Most kids don't even speak that way uh, or write that way, let alone write that way. And thankfully, she has two adults in her life who say, hey, that's not happening, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's that whole, if they're not making a noise, particularly in schools now, if they're not bothering me, then they're okay. And that is not necessarily the case. So that's absolutely true. Um, absolutely true. And, you know, the more, the more we actually, the more we actually take the time um, you know, this goes back to what you said. The more we actually take the time to ask questions um, and and really understand what young people are going through. Um, I just, you know, I, people come in and out of our office all the time, and today it just happened. Some folks came into our office uh, from Colorado, um, uh, a woman who came in, equally passionate youth worker, um, who has, for her own organization, um, and she runs an organization called Youth Zone, um, out in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, um, she found that it was very useful to develop a short, really a sort of a short set of questions to ask people a range of questions as they were coming into her organization and to do it on the computer so that they actually had a chance to stop and reflect um, mm-hmm. and think about the questions rather than just say, I don't know. So give them 10 to 15, 20 minutes to answer a set of questions which could be everything from, you know, are you hopeful to are you concerned about anything, are you being bullied, a range of questions, just getting a sense of what's going on. Now, and then rather than just ask, answering those questions and having them go into a file or a computer, that becomes what the person who's now going to talk to you about what you could do in this program, that becomes what they use to talk to you. Exactly. If you didn't ask any questions, exactly. they might say, well, tell me a little bit more about that. But they found it was an amazing way to start a conversation with young people. It was a very good way to really tease out very quickly if young people needed some immediate help, um, whether they were being bullied or they were even thinking about suicide or they had a substance abuse problem, but also whether they were just lonely, whether they needed friends, whether they didn't have a place to go or a place to live, all kinds of things that the combination of asking the questions having someone then have a conversation with you about your answers to the questions and really look interested, be interested, and then what was very important, making sure that the person who was doing that understood what next, had the resources to say, well, if that's what you're feeling, let me do this. Let me connect you to this person. Let me pick up the phone and call. But that young person was really feeling not only that they were listened to, but that somebody was going to actually help them solve those problems. Supported. And they were supported. And they were supported. And and before we go to commercial, I mean, go to our break, I want to, because I do ask, because I did ask her, I asked all my interns, what skills would you like to work on while being an intern, when you become an intern? And she said, communicating better with new people, 
and to expand my knowledge of various things and to meet new people. So that she, those are the things that we were going, you know, we will work on while she's in there. Because again, what's to for me to intern, it's everything is a give and take. And so mm-hmm. if you're help, if I'm helping you with your you know, your work skills or those tangible skills, I need to be help also helping you with those soft skills. So let's take a break, and when we come back, I'm actually going to read her re- uh, her reply um, after she's talked to some teachers, and then we'll discuss that. Terrific. All right, B. Doc Rock, Foolish Dreamer. I may be just a foolish dreamer. Dreamer, yeah. But I don't care. I don't. Cause I know my happiness is waiting somewhere. Talk to him like. I'm searching for that silver lining. Horizons that I never see. I'd rather catch these than count sheep in my last dream. I was in a session with ho, J. Cole. That's heaven with a lot of soul. I've been dreaming about this since eight years old. As a little girl, I dream I changed the world. Clean the shore, feed the poor. Less death, more living. Less taking, more giving. In a position to live right. In a position to give sight. That pillow like a window with every view that's nice. Don't wake me up. But I'm here with my team Somehow our dreams are intertwined Cause now they seem as real as mine Rocky had a session with Fly I bought a house for Nisi Play was on a worldwide tour And JT made a beat with Yeezy That slumber that keep me under the best Influence, that's when I feel the loosest It lets me know I can do it It's like I'm moving without movement But my brain be talking They say I'm sleep talking and sleep walking Cause every step is dreaming for real teens and on Twitter at RTFRT Radio. 
Welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton. To talk live on the air, call 347-539-5226. Welcome back, guys. I have Karen Pittman with me tonight, and I'm going to read you um, after I sent um, her email, the student an email, as, requesting that she call me, and also after um, her teachers talked to her, she sent, Dear Miss Creighton, this is, name removed, I apologize for not responding to you earlier. As I have stated before, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. However, before, unlike before, however, I would like to ask for a chance to try. I am unsure of what I could bring to your company or how I could promote it. I do know, however, that I am punctual, a quick study, and hardworking. If you could give me a chance, I would love to be able to prove myself. That's terrific. That, yes, exactly. That was like, that right there is was like, okay, good, good, you know, <laughs> good. Um, and so many more need that. So many more need that. And and she named she named three things that are again are so important for employers. Exactly. Um, exactly. What that that they're looking for. Um, and and without those things, she wouldn't be able to contribute. Even if she thought she had great ideas about what your company might want to do, if she can't be punctual, if she's not a quick study, if she's not hardworking, she's not going to get a chance to do that. And we 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 can all you know, one of the things that was so interesting about the example that you shared was this young person who actually really does have many, many skills to bring um, and certainly and certainly is bringing many competencies that she's already built, um, didn't think she was ready to even take an internship, whereas you could, you could just as likely have another young person who really lacks lots of things that they need to have who's going to be absolutely sure that they're ready. Oh, exactly. Um, and, and so it goes both <laughs> ways. When we when we don't actually name, when we don't break it down, and name exactly what it means for you to be ready to do this thing, um, young people can either way o- way overestimate or way underestimate their readiness. And so either way, they're not going to prepare themselves correctly. Yeah, and then they get, and then it's frustrating for them. And I understand it, and I tell them I understand your frustration. Uh, yet, that's not going to get you what you need. I had people coming to me the last week of school asking for re- uh, references for scholarships. What? What are you doing? That's not how this process works. Or I'll say, okay, I'll do the scholarship application. Can I have the information? Because I'm going to write a letter. I need to have the. And they don't have the people. It's like, how do you not know this? So now I have to step back and say, okay, you don't know it. So let me teach you. Because you need this is a teachable moment. Now you need to know when you're asked someone to do something, and you you know reference whatever. You need to bring them the information. You need to give it to them in a timely manner. These are the things that they need to know, and these are the things, as you said, are make or break. They can have the best. They could be the best mathematician in the world, but if they're having to deal with anybody other than being in a cubicle. These other skills are going to matter, and it's going to make or break whether they keep their jobs or not. Right, right. You know, and this isn't just about young people. I was to, today sitting at my desk an email. I got um, uh, I got an email from uh, a colleague who runs a large national youth organization, um, looking for a, a chief finance officer, somebody who's going to be the head of their whole finance department. It's a multi, multi million dollar organization. And I just clicked it open to see what the you know what the job description looks like. This is a four page job description with skills details mm-hmm. telling you exactly what we expect you to be able to do. Not just what I need you to have from a, in terms of a, a finance and accounting background, mm-hmm. but how I want you to relate to people, how I expected you to fit into our culture, how I expected you to respond to, you know, respond to frustrations. I mean, I've never seen, I, I saved it. I didn't know anybody for the job, but I saved <laughs> the resume. I mean, I saved the job description because I really thought, you know, if young people could see something like this and exactly. understand the number of things that it takes to be able to do a job well, yeah. it's not just do, can I, you know, 
do the thing, but can I do all of this? Can I really be in this environment with other people um, and perform as a part of a team, as a part of a, as a part of an organization or a company? Um, it, it was amazing. And so, you know, it, this is not just about it's not just about young people. You think if you can break something down for somebody that you assume is going to show up with years and years and years of work experience, if they're going to apply to be, you know the number two person in, organ in a big organization, we really need to break it down for young people um, oh my God, in a way exactly. that they can really understand it. And, and understand that sometimes, because I find a lot of adults get very frustrated. And I tell you, sometimes I get frustrated. And then, but I know that sometimes I have to step back and say, okay, um, where is the disconnect? Is this something that, you know, we as adults have, I, I just tell them all the time, I have to apologize because we failed you. If you don't know this at this point, then we as adults have failed you, and let me now teach you this lesson. Because you, where else are you going to get it? You, you're not going to pull it out of your behind. Where are you going to get it? it and, and, and that's what a, a lot of people expect. You know, oh, they should know this. But if no one's told them, just like if no one's told you anything, how do they know? And yet they're going to be held accountable because that's just where our I mean, society works. Whether you know it or not, you're still going to be held accountable for your actions. Yep, yep, I agree. And so that's what I find myself. I spend a lot of time just, um, you know, I, I, and that's why I left the classroom because I, I recognized that I was doing a disservice when it came to math, science, social studies, and language arts. I don't care. I honestly don't care about that. I leave that to the people who are experts at that. What I'm an expert in is, is the, are, the, in, are those things that are intangible, are those things that are having young people to reflect on their choices and be able to deal with the consequences of those things, of those things that, hey, you need to practice this skill. Practice it while you're in high school where it's safe and you get, if you make a mistake, you have a comfortable environment to fall back on. See, that's what I'm an expert at. That's what a lot of young people, a lot of people are good at when it comes to working with young people. And we as a society need to see value in that because it's not just about can they pass this math, science, social studies, um, language arts exam. It's the whole picture. It's a broader picture than that. No, you, you, you're right. And, you know, let's talk a little bit. We're talking a lot about schools. Let's talk a little bit about the, the difference in the environment that's created um, in a classroom or school setting and in a youth organization. Now, these are okay, not absolute. You could have, exactly. You could have both. Let's Let's stop there. We're going to stop for have a break, a break. First. Yes, okay. and then I want to get into that conversation because I also want to talk about life because that's a, because it's not just college and work. It's that's also right. how you live your life. So I want to talk about that as well. Good. <laughs> B. Doc Rock, where to now? Yeah, been thinking, I've accomplished a lot of goals, surpassed a lot of things I didn't think I would, now I'm starting to think, where to now, shout out Gmo by the way, yeah, where to now, we been up, they went down, twice out of town, we changing the scene, they say nightmares that we live in our dreams, so where to now, where to now? We been up, they went down, flights out of town, we changing the scene. They say nightmares that we live in our dreams, so where to now? Thinking with my eyes, seeing with my mind, a prescription for my vision just isn't as clear as mine. My future's in the eye of the beholder, holder, down with no questions, no gossip or second guessing if they heard my sound yet. This year my sound set. Word of rhyme players, they know she a rhyme player. My team ballin' like we supposed to, the go-tos. Coaching all my skills on Pro Tools. I didn't want the wars, push forward through doors that weren't open. Hate me the loudest while my crowd is soft spoken. First we weren't rolling, now we skating like blades. Reminded by the grind how time changed. What used to be strange is familiar. Keep close, my familiar. Cause they know she was gifted like Matilda. As the empire builds up, they become starstruck. Wishing for a comment with good luck, cause where to now, we been up, they went down, flights out of town, we changing the scene, 
It's they nightmares that we live in our dreams. So where to now? Where to now? We've been up. They went down. Twice out of town. We changing the scene. It's they nightmares that we live in our dreams. So where to now? Like camera action. We ready for the show. The underdog, we've been playing those. Now the scenes froze, my role is the director, respect the views from the camera, though my team ain't no actors, we was looking for a way in, the lightweights then weighed in, heavy, them tanks were lunatic, no Nelly, now tell me, what's next, the Grammys, the touring, foreign exchange, even though they speak no English, they chanting my name, we want the fame, just to claim we got it all, to hit them all and max out all our credit cards, forget a price tag, we buy fast with no looking back, to getting those items have no strings attached, in fact we all have have opinions on the next level Portray ourselves with halos and fights with the devil I want to touch the sky and bring it down to earth Considering what's next, cause I done got first So where to now? We've been up, they went down Fights out of town, changing the scene It's they nightmares that we live in our dreams So where to now? Where to now? We've been up, they went down Fights out of town, we changing the scene it's day nightmares that we live in our dreams. We live in our dreams. unknown music artist we need you for the show if you'd like your own mini concert please send a request for information to real talk for real teens at gmail.com welcome back guys i have karen pittman here with me and we're talking about are you ready and so we want i wanted to talk about um when we came back from the commercial i mean for the break was um settings outside of school and um in your life. And the reason I talk so much about school, Karen, um, is I find that m- most teenagers are not availing themselves of the opportunities that are out there in youth programs. Yes, I think that I think that's I think that's true. Um, uh, and either because they don't know about them, um, yes. because because a lot of the programs that uh, exist are more geared towards uh, elementary and middle school students than high school students, um, often because young people would really, especially by the time they get to high school age, are looking for something that's a combination of uh, structured activity, uh, some sort of pay or stipend, uh, and, and really a chance to really do real work. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I think I think that the the fact that we don't have enough conversation um, with young people about what they could be doing, um, you know, is is an important piece. But the reason I wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, the differences between it was picking up on one of your comments uh, about being able to practice while in high school, um, and and too often um, the the High school is not a place where you actually can practice and make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can in youth programs, but but it often in high school, if I make a mistake, there there are immediate consequences, whether that's being sent to the principal's office, being given a disciplinary slip, being suspended. Um, I don't really get to make a mistake and be in a group in which we actually can analyze that mistake and talk about it. If I do something that has consequences for the group, the group doesn't get to actually have a conversation with me about what that means. The, the, the consequences are handled uh, too often very swiftly by adults. Uh, and so that means that whether a young person moves into a work environment or they move into a post-secondary environment, 
often the, the signals are different and they don't read them correctly. So if I'm going to go to college, community college, four-year college, go away, um, nobody is going to grab me if I'm 15 minutes late for class or decide to cut class. I'm not going to get an immediate response to that. Exactly. I'm just going to fail the class. <laughs> Exactly. And then somebody says, well, how did I, why did I fail the class? Well, you didn't come to class. Well, nobody told me I was supposed to come to class every day. Well, you were supposed to just know that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think this idea of having an environment in which you can practice and get feedback is important, but it, 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 we have to create those environments. And I can say in some schools, in, well, some classrooms that happen, because I, I speak about this often, my principal very if, – if I – wrote a referral and sent someone to, you know, to see an administrator, it was something for an infraction of a county or a school policy law. Most of the things I dealt with, I dealt with discipline or whatever it was in my classroom. And um, that, I have to say, is because I have that youth development background. I was used to help dealing with things in, you know, my youth group and not having to have someone to, um, you know, I can't run to my executive director every time some kid is acting out. I need to deal with it. Um, and so you have those pockets, but there is not enough of those. And I can tell you, I really believe that teachers need to be trained. And we talked about this in my, my conversation last week. Um, we were talking about dismantling the school to uh, prison pipeline. I think teachers need to be trained in a form of positive youth development. If it's not AYD, it needs to be something where it's, um, they, they get those skills because I find that a lot of teachers, when they come out of school, all they, the, uh, you know, the, the little bit of what they get in classroom management is, you know, have your, you know, lesson plan, have your seating chart, and blah, blah. That's not the humanity of it. And a lot of uh, teachers um, don't understand how to deal with um, different behaviors by young people. And so yeah, they just pass, it's easier to pass them on to an administrator. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we, we've done here at, at the forum is really focus on on coming up with ways to help teachers and youth workers assess the quality of the learning environment they develop. And again, that's independent of what you're trying to teach, what the content is. Have you created a supportive, respectful environment in which young people are going to be engaged, in which they have the ability to have choices in which they actually feel safe, not just physically safe, but psychologically and emotionally safe, have you created that environment in which they really are then participating as a part of a small community that's supporting each other? If you've created that environment, they'll learn whatever you want them to learn or they'll be, they'll be motivated to learn whatever they want to learn. If you haven't created that environment, you really have dampened the opportunity for learning no matter what the content is. And it's funny because how you how you just articulated that because uh, um, I wasn't the only teacher and there are several teachers in the building at several you know schools across the country who when there is an issue or a kid really needs to discuss something or they're struggling with I mean those kids knew I did not I was a um, I was a special education teacher so they knew I didn't have that, the strong academic stuff but they would request to come to me because they knew that in that environment I was going to roll up my sleeves and we were going to figure this out together. Or if there was an issue at home, we were going to, you know, see what we can come up with. Um, and there are several teachers like that in the building, but when we go back to staying on the surface, not asking questions, there are not enough teachers or adults in schools asking the question, why is it that these young people gravitate towards these adults? And if, if they are, what can I learn from that? Right. right. Because yeah. it's not rocket yeah. science. I learned how to do it. Anybody can learn how to do it. But again, it is learning. Um, yeah. And, and that's <laughs> we we you know we we actually do the same disservice to teachers as we do to young people when we don't name these skills. Exactly. We just assume that it's all about the content. When we don't name the skills, and then we put any anybody in the exactly. position of really. Working with a group, whether that's a class, whether it's a classroom, it's a youth organization, it's a it's a church group. Working with a group of people really requires you understanding group dynamics, how to motivate, how to move back and forth, how to really move move a group of young people, um, you know, towards the goal. When you know that they're going to come in with varying skills, 
um, and interest, and how you really build a sense of community with that with that group. Well, those are those are skills, and you're right; you have to learn them. But yes. but if we don't teach them, um, then people really fall back on. You know, they, they 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 really they tend to fall back on just being overly structured and overly disciplined, and you know, sit down. That's true of everybody. And yes, this is an important. It's an important point, and it would be. You know, one of the things that I would love to see, um, and we've done a little bit of it, um, is when we really start to, when you start to really assess environments where learning happens, regardless of the setting in which it's happening, when you see a good learning environment, learning really is happening. Um, and just a, a quick story, I expect we're going to go to one more break, um, but there's a, a psychologist out at the University of Illinois studied, just like to study time use of adolescents to find out what they did with their time and to figure out when they were sort of at, at there's a psychological term called flow, when, they, when both their head and their heart was engaged at the same time, when I'm motivated and I'm concentrating. And what we found was when they were carrying these beepers and every time the beeper would go off, they'd have to write down where they were and how they felt. Well, if they were in class, chances were they were neither motivated nor concentrated. Mm-hmm. If they were with their friends, they were motivated, but they weren't concentrating. They weren't using their heads. Mm-hmm. If they were playing organized sports, you've got a higher level of motivation and concentrating. They were motivated to be a part of that team, play that sport well, and they were concentrating on what they were trying to do. But he found the highest the levels highest that they were in, the, and he didn't even know what they were, that he, they were in these things that he ended up calling structured voluntary activities. We would call them youth programs. They were in something that they had chosen to do. Mm-hmm. It had a structure to it. And because of that, they were really able to, to just embrace the learning. Now, we can come back and take that apart, and that doesn't mean we should shut down all the schools and open up all the youth programs because we've got a range in both. But exactly. it does mean that when we, have, when we start with an orientation that our job is to engage young people so that learning can happen, it's very different when we start with the orientation that says, we're here to teach you this content, and you've got to learn it whether you're engaged or not. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, we have a, the, um, in the last minute, what would you like to say? How would you like to end the show? Well, you mentioned that we started out talking about being ready for college, work, and life. And let's take a last minute and talk about the life part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because obviously we've got... We've got young people who, because they aren't building these skills, it isn't just they aren't ready for college or work, they're really not ready to fully engage in their communities, to fully engage with their families. Um, and we know for a fact that young people want to be contributors. This is, this, is, this is not even a question. This is a fact. But without these skills and competencies, um, and without the community having the expectation that they should be contributing so that they're being asked to contribute, we end up with, with too many young people who are isolated, um, who are, are not finding the connections that they need to have in their life, whether those are their personal connections, in romantic relationships, it's their friend connections, it's connections with neighbors and adults. It's really building that, building that sense of, of having a life beyond, um, you know, sort of beyond yourself and your immediate family that is so important uh, for young people. And these skills really do, you know, help that happen as well. So when we ask young people what kind of skills they want to work on, and I go back to the young person that's now going to be working for you, how do I meet new people? How do I connect to new people? How do I communicate with new people? Mm-hmm. Those are things that are going to help her be ready for life, not just ready for college and work. Exactly. And as the adult, I, because I know those are the things that she um, is challenged with and wants to work on, I need I will make sure that I place her in environments that are safe but challenge her to go each, every time. It's going to push her a little bit farther to go out on that limb, but it's going to be in a safe environment where I can, you know, stand by and watch. I can monitor. I can, you know, coach or whatever. I wouldn't just throw her out there. But it happens step by step until she gets just like a baby bird. They figure it out. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Karen, for being our guest. It was a great talking to you. It was wonderful reconnecting with you. And I wish you luck in everything you're doing. Thank you. Same to you. It was a great fun. All right. Take care.
Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to end the show with um, B. Doc Croc's last song, Not Your Average. Have a wonderful evening. Your girl B. Doc Croc. You know, I was looking in the mirror the other day and I'm like, what's so different about me? Shout out to King Riley on the track. Let's go. Well, let's go. I'm not your average girl or normal chick. I rock fitted caps, make sure my Jordan fit. Always been super thick, it's just in the jeans. Made me sick when dudes try to get in the jeans. I was no beauty queen, but I was proud of prime. Went with my best friend, but I did it for my mom. Knew I was the bomb without a ticker. Hot rhymes better every time I delivered. Most dudes mess with her. I was super cool. Them girls used to hate that back in middle school. Thinking I want they dude, but didn't have a clue On my Aaliyah-ish, if your girl only knew Since two, I love shoes, I do KY Even them chicks' heel tips can't match my fly See, I don't have to try, it's too easy I'm not the average girl on TV, believe me I'm not the average girl Labeled a tomboy because I love the gym. Kept boys as friends, girls hardly mess with them. Hardly roll my eyes or even snap my neck. Didn't like my clothes tight or my hair pressed. Tomboy fresh, that's how I dress. Never a drama queen, couldn't stand that mess. Didn't like the gossip, nor instigate. If I was a normal girl, they still would hate me anyway. Any day, I would choose jeans over dresses. Mad cause they got chopped and screwed just like Texas. I'm guessing they wish they was just like me The chances of me being like them was unlikely Some old girls write me and say I ain't changed I write back like wish I could say the same See, I knew the game, so I didn't play And said I went the other way, all I can say is I'm not the average girl in the studio My work makes determine how my body shows Thank you for listening, and please join us each and every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern for more Real Talk for Real Teens.